Yeah. Okay. Welcome. Um, this is, I think, is the fifth week we're doing this, and um, today's lesson is going to be about watercolor, and I'm doing something a little different, um, including two of my former art students um, as part of the demonstration and the activity, and just so you can see the kind of variety that happens when people use a medium as opposed to just me using it. Okay? So, watercolor is um, probably the highest art form of all the visual arts in that it's, it's very delicate and um, it involves a very sensitive touch and a very um, sensitive use of color. I know I said sensitive a lot, but it's, um, the color is like a vapor. The light of the paper comes through the color and it's as though it's been breathed on and it looks very beautiful. You, watercolor is not oil painting. Watercolor is different in that it's not heavy. There's no opacity. Um, if you want opacity, then you use oil, acrylic, or wash. But the beautiful thing about watercolor is it looks like it was breathed onto the paper. So if you look at the watercolors of Sargent, or Cezanne, Homer, uh, Turner, Degas, they're all, they're all, they have this lovely feeling of life to them. They look alive. So we're just gonna practice uh, two techniques. Uh, I'm gonna introduce you to two techniques. One is the wet on wet, and the other is wet on dry. And the other uh, approach to watercolor is you start with your light colors first and your less colors are dark. As opposed to oil painting where you start with all your darks and shadows first and your last colors are light. Okay, so maybe I threw a lot at you, but um, it's very simple. And um, let me introduce you. This is Wei. And we're all going to be wearing masks. I'm wearing masks too. And this is Allie, Malta, okay? And they're extremely talented kids. I don't want to make them nervous or, you know, put them into a position where they feel like there's expectations. They just have fun. They let it go. They trust their instincts and they wind up making very, very beautiful art. So uh, I thought it'd be a nice dimension to our little workshop. So come on over. Let's take a look. Come on, girls. Okay. I'm putting my mask on just to keep it politically correct. Okay. This is known. Okay. This is known as a worksheet. Okay. And what I've done is I've taped it and I made these what are known as thumbnail sketch spaces. And what artists do is in order to not spend a lot of money, waste a lot of money, watercolor paper this size is like a dollar a sheet. So to conserve and be economical, you break the paper up into little boxes so you can do multiple studies. And maybe on a page of nine, you may get one or two studies that you want to turn into a larger finished work. And you know exactly where you're going to go. So this is unworked. This is Allie's. And this is something I started. Just want you to take a look. Okay. This is a worksheet with thumbnail sketches on it. And I'm experimenting for the sake of this activity. Um, with wet on wet approaches in which the color bleeds and then wet on dry in which we're able to control an edge okay and I started with very light colors first so I'm gonna do one down here for the sake of the lesson I'm gonna do a little demo here and then um, I'm going to let the kids Allie and we take over and do their thing too and they'll, they'll be um, photographed and filmed and you'll see how it happens Okay, so you should have a watercolor set. Uh, I'm breaking the rule here. You should have clean water. Okay, so I'll get Wee's water. She doesn't mind. I'll get new, new stuff for you. Okay, and you should have a watercolor set. There are multiple kinds of sets. Any general set is fine. If you find out this is going to be your calling, then you go for the very expensive. Okay, so I'm going to start with a uh, very light wash like I did here, this whole section here is wet on wet. So I'm gonna go with my lightest colors first. If I wanna get that sky, my lightest color here would be in this yellow. Okay, so I get a lot of water, I put it on, and I'm gonna tilt my board so the water runs down. Okay, now you may say, gee, that's kind of a heavy yellow. Well, if you think that's heavy, then just get yourself a paper towel and blot it. 
Now that hue is still in the paper, but it's there like a vapor. It's very, very light and soft. Okay? Now, this is a wet on wet approach. So I'm going to go back in here. I'm going to take just a touch of purple and lightly put it in where the color is wet. Now, if you notice, what's happening is because the yellow was wet and the purple was wet, or the crimson, it's now bleeding. And that can be used to very creative effects. Okay? Now, to dry that up, if you wanted to, you just take a blow dryer and you hit it. You get it to set up a little quicker. And for the sake of our video, that's what I'm going to do. You know, notice. Notice how nice that blend from the yellow into the purple is going. Okay, so what was that? Eight seconds? All right, so now I've got this blue. So right now, these two colors, the yellow and this um, crimson, they're warm colors. They're colors that relate to the sun, to fire. So we call them warm colors. Now I'm going to go with a slightly cool color, a blue. Okay, I'm going to pull it in over here. Wow, well that's beautiful. And just make an angle. Okay, and maybe I should have a little more contrast in there. So maybe I'll get a darker blue. So I just went over here, I got a little more blue, a little hue. Now I'm going to let the water do its thing. Take a look at that. That's really sweet. And many times when you're on the highway and you're passing a landscape, you see all this array of color. It's like the mountains are giant palettes. Right? They're like giant palettes. So this is starting to look really sweet. Okay, so now on the bottom, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to put a little, like I did up there, I'm going to just put a little orange. And it's still wet on wet. No problem here. Don't be afraid. Okay, so now that almost looks like the autumn earth, where things are turning auburn. Okay, that's very sweet. I'm going to leave that just like that. Okay, now I'm going to do a quick one in the box over here on the right, and I'm going to do the foreground like this. this all of this was wet on wet. Now I'm going to do wet on wet with wet on dry. So I have this coming in. I'm going to put my little orange in here. Oh, how sweet. You know that sun at about 4 or 5.30? It does this beautiful thing in the sky. How lovely. Okay. Then I'm going to get my blue. Basically the same thing. This is looking very Turner-esque. Look at that. Look at those. I can come up here. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Just with the brush. It's as though I'm doing vegetation. Right? See that? Okay. So just having a little fun. All right. And I'm going to pull in some oranges down here. And then I'm going to hit this with the blow dryer. Like that. I'm going to block this with my paper towel. Okay. Now, there's something going on in this picture here where you see the vertical shape. Looks like a, a tree in the distance, but it's very soft focus. That's basically what Leonardo da Vinci taught us about aerial perspective. There were two kinds of perspective, linear and aerial. Aerial was, had to do with atmosphere and distance. It basically was the further away something is, the softer the edges are, right? Okay, so I'm going to come down. This is almost dry. Okay. That's pretty cool. Very nice. You can touch that field, but look at how nice and it's almost dreamy, okay? Now I'm going to do this hard edge thing and get this kind of mountain in there. Okay, so let, let's go with a little... I don't know what kind of mountain we're gonna do. We're gonna do something. 
Oh yeah. Okay, so now we have a foreground, a middle ground, and we have a background. That's it. Okay. Now we can play for we can let that be. Sometimes art happens in 13 seconds, and sometimes it takes 13 weeks. Okay. Um, so we're gonna let the kids try. Um, watch Ali and we as they start. And I'll go over again with them step by step so they don't feel like they're lost or Doug's throwing them a curve ball. Right. <laughs> okay, so you want to get your brushes out and I'll get you clean water. Okay, so we're going to keep it small. And um, that will keep within the time frame of, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And we'll see how you feel about that. Okay, so first thing you should try to do is what I did. Start out with your wash. All your light colors first. Very light. More water than color. Use your paper towel. Don't be afraid to block your paper. Okay, and that's it. What's interesting in the art room is watching how people handle materials. Um, Everybody has a different, what they call, sensibility. A way of handling color, uh, materials, textures, edges, and everybody's sensibility and imagination become engaged, and you begin to see very interesting things. Actually, the less perfect it looks, the more you're finding your own style. Style has to do not with perfection, but with those little idiosyncrasies, like Van Gogh's style was about exaggeration and distortion. And you can tell his paintings in a room of 400, you'll spot a Van Gogh because his style is so different than the style of a Courbet or a Corot or a Cezanne. That's it. Right, that's lovely. You can keep a low horizon line, you can keep a high horizon line. Okay, in mine, I kind of kept it, kind of kept it somewhere in the middle. I didn't realize that. Um, that's what Duggar did. Okay, so don't forget, you're doing background, middle ground, and foreground. And don't be afraid to take your color and go right into the next box. You may just want to extend it, you know what I'm saying? The first box may be, may be something you're just getting yourself acquainted with it. You're getting used to it. By the time you get to the third or fourth thumbnail area, you feel much, you're probably much more comfortable and you have a sense of freedom about the whole thing and you don't care. And remember, there are these, um, you could use these brushes too, kids. These are great. It saves a lot of, you know, small brushes. Uh, make one think in terms of detail. Wide brushes make one think in terms of large rhythmic areas, okay, masses. And that's what you want to think about, the masses first. Okay, so I think we're doing good here. Oh yeah, this is way better. Nice. 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 I love that orange with the purple. I'm trying to steal your show. I'm trying to steal your show, Deb. be breaking for a commercial in a minute. You'll find out. <laughs> this is 
lovely, just like that. Way to go, Ray. Now, can't you see that? You go to a print shop and you get that enlarged to maybe four feet by five feet. Mm -hmm. That's spectacular. That's it. Nice lines. You could just do lines like that. That's beautiful. Okay, notice the way the girls are using the watercolor and they're really finding their way. This is what, in many of the books that are written about art, whether it's about painting, drawing, ceramics, sculpture, it's about, they talk about finding one's way. And with the material, there's usually an entry point somewhere. Nice, these are beautiful. You guys are just moving along great. see this being enlarged huge so you see what I'm saying about the color breathing you see where the light of the paper comes through the color mm -hmm. how lovely that is as opposed to how heavy we work when we work with acrylic how that's known as opacity yeah. you know you're, you're putting color that's very dense it doesn't show the surface but in this there, there's a delicacy here that is just magnificent. At least I think so. Nice way. Well, you know, they have these lovely uh, small frames at Michael's. Oh, could, like the four by six? Like you could do a triptych here, meaning you could take any three, triptych meaning a set of three, and buy three small frames and have them put them one, two, three as though you did your series, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, you know, heaven, earth, hell, or whatever, you know, uh, infancy, adulthood, and old age, whatever, whatever you want, whatever cycles you're talking about. Those are nice colors, guys. Thank you, Daddy. Boy, no tattoo ever looked that good. <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to do, let's say we do four or five, and then we'll just take a look at what you did, we'll see the progress you made, and that'll be the end of the workshop. Pretty simple. I'm working on this handmade paper and uh, this is really not watercolor paper but this is what you do in art. You, you take materials that are made for other purposes and you find new directions with them. At least that's what Allie told me. I, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll tell you everything. <laughs> I'm being a big deal one day. Oh, yeah. No, you guys are doing great. You got, got four done already. That's awesome. And now remember, once you look at these, um, you take them home with you, uh, you may look at them tomorrow and say, gee, those look like awesome backgrounds. I may want to put something in the foreground or something hard-edged. Exactly. Okay? So just consider that.
Now Wee's doing a lot of what reminds me of color field painting, where they're just giant areas of color, and color becomes the painting. The subject matter of the painting is just color. So we have like Barnett Newman and Mark Rothko and uh, Helen Frankenthaler. We had people who were just working with color. There was very little line. It was just reds against greens, against purples, against blacks. Hans Hoffman. We were working strictly with color. Color was the subject matter of the art. You know, when I went to college, this was major in art. Art was, wasn't even a major. They just started making it a major in 1968. They didn't have any of the sophisticated classes you guys have now. Mm -hmm. you, know, you have color theory. You study Joseph Albers and all of the dynamics of, of color and the chemistry and how it leaves after images on your retina and everything. Um, they didn't have anything like that. It was just drawing still lifes and painting figures, and that's all. So I kind of like was lost in terms of color theory. I didn't know anything. But you guys, I mean, you, you look like you know what you do. You could be totally fooling me, I don't know. <laughs> but you look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> See, now, this is sweet. I mean, that, that's a statement just by itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, you may want to look at um, a few artists uh, who worked with the bare minimum. Um, I have to give you their, I have to give you their names. Uh, one of them is Sam Francis. Okay. Um, he did things where he just worked the edges and he left big voided areas in the middle. Mm -hmm. He just worked edges. Okay. So what we have in these paintings, uh, people may be looking when they see this film and say, yeah, well, I don't see anything from nature here. You have nature motifs working in your pieces. Like you've got things that look like they're growing. Uh, you have colors that look like change of seasons. She has images over here that look like close-ups of the edges of mountains. Okay, you don't have to draw detailed, traditional mountain, tree, river, sky doesn't have to be like that. It could be just exactly what you're doing, the influences of nature. I mean, look at what, look what Walt Whitman did with a blade of grass. I mean, you know, he, with just one single blade of grass, he spoke about all the mysteries of life, all right? Uh, he saw it as a, a flag of his disposition. He saw it as a uniform hieroglyphic that spoke to all people. He saw it as a child of the forest and as a handkerchief of God. So. I mean, who, who thinks like that? Artists think like that. And that's what happens when you do paintings like this. The color may excite some thought, some poetic idea. Okay, yeah, so we'll, we'll stop at 25. Okay. All right, so that's beautiful. So we're going to, we have a minute left. So whatever you got to do, finish it up in a minute. So before you shut it off, just take pause in front of their piece, each per, each person's piece, and uh, Ali, which section do you like the most of the seven? This one. Yeah, good. And Wei, which section do you like the most? Um, either this one or that one. Hmm. This one or this one? Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. I could see them in large. I could see both of them in large. So this is just the beginning. I mean, this is a, a journey that artists can take and spend years exploring color on paper.
So this is a little watercolor workshop. Um, I hope you enjoyed looking at it, and we'll see you in three more weeks.